Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here. And today I'm so glad to be joined by this incredible woman of God. She's an influencer. We know her from a very popular mainstream television show, Madison Pruitt, uh, releasing her very first book, Made for This Moment. Madison, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So I totally did watch the entire season of The Bachelor <laughs> that you were on. Confession, right? Confession. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's when I'm like, oh, I give yeah. away my little secrets. But the truth is, I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't watch this show if there weren't people like you on it. Mm -hmm. um you know the salt <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was so excited uh for your season because I loved I just feel like the way you represented Christ on a, on a mainstream show like that which most people are like why do Christians do these things but I just thought it was so you know f the season before there was somebody else who was a Christian and they vilified that person so it was really beautiful to see um just your representation of Christ so let's start there right um your book made for this moment is all about yes. being at a certain place for such a time as this as Queen yes. Esther so what do you think was God's purpose for you to be on The Bachelor I mean I feel like the I mean the biggest purpose not only did I feel like I learned so much and I grew so much but really just for everyone that God kind of spoke to and encouraged through that and to me it was like one of the it was one of the coolest things to be able to say man like God can use someone like me God can use something like the bachelor to bring glory to his name because that's just how big he is and it showed me that we can't put God in a box, you know, and I think my whole life, I just imagined like, okay, God shows up on mission trips, God shows up on churches, God shows up in the confinements of a home, but I never would have imagined that God would use somebody like me and something like The Bachelor, something so secular to just bring his like make his name known and just so many people were encouraged the girls on the show the producers mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. people watching and again that's not at all towards me but that's all glory to god and to me it was just like man it just it, it kind of just like got me so passionate i was like man like that just shows me that god can use every single person out there no matter what they've been through no matter what their situation looks like and it's not confined to like the perfect little box like he can use anything anyone anytime because that's just how good he is and I learned so much through it I feel like a lot of the girls um on the show were so encouraged and a lot of them you know honestly have like come to know Jesus through it yes uh, I know which is so cool and so many girls oh my gosh like it would just bless your heart for me to just show you some of the messages I've received but so many girls who have given their heart to Jesus yeah. and girls who have decided to wait until marriage. Um, yes. Just me talk about my decision. So it has just been so cool. So I would say that's, I mean, that's why, like we're all called to step out in faith. And sometimes it doesn't look like what we thought and never would have mm -hmm. imagined it would go on the bachelor. <laughs> but I was obedient and God always- I was going to say, how does that look? Like prepping for something like that, being a Christian, because, you know, there are people that are like, I don't even understand how Christians come to that conclusion, but you felt you were being obedient to God. And yeah. what I love about your book, you know, you talk about, um, you know, preparing for those big moments, yeah. not just going into those big moments, like, what am I supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you talk about the importance of actually preparing. Mm -hmm. uh, so talk about that. How was it? How, what did it look like? being obedient to God, to be on a secular show like that, but also preparing to be on a show like that. I love that question because that really is like one of the biggest hearts behind behind my book is, you know, I think so many people see character as one of those things that it's who you are when no one is watching. But I believe that, you know, it's also who you are when everyone is watching and you're able to prepare, you're able to stand firm, you're able to stay true to yourself, you're able to stay true to your convictions under pressure, under temptation, when you've prepared in the private time, when you've prepared off camera, when you've prepared when nobody was around. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was a question, you know, when I came off the show, that was the question that everyone was asking me was like, Maddie, how are you able to stay true to your convictions? How are you able to stand firm with the whole world watching with so much temptation, with so many opinions? 
And I was like, well, because I was able to do it when nobody was around, because I had been mm. practicing that leading up to those moments. And so I didn't have to hope that I had what it took to stand firm. I had been putting the right tools in the toolbox so that when that moment came, I wasn't like, what do I do? It's like, no, like it was just almost like it just came out of me, you know? And I always like to say, when pressure hits, what's inside of you is what's going to come out of you. And that's why it's so important to invest well. That's why it's so important to know who you are when nobody's around. Take those moments alone with God and figure out who am I? What do I believe? What kind of life do I want to live? And pre-decide before moments of pressure come. When I'm alone with a guy in a room, what decisions do I want to make? When my friends start throwing these things at me and tell me, this is what you need to do. This is who you need to be. This is where you need to go. What do I want to do in those moments? And ask yourself those tough questions so that you're not just going off of feeling and impulse and, and off of what everybody else is doing, which is what I think most of us do. But then we find ourselves later on down the road, like, dang it, how did I get here? You know, right. and we find ourselves like resentment follows, shame follows, mm -hmm. guilt follows. And it's like, if we can take time to prepare before those moments come, if we can take time to ask ourselves those tough questions and pre-decide before those moments of pressure and temptation arise, we're going to find ourselves like living a life that we're proud of, living a life where we're worthy of the calling that God has given us, living a life where we're walking in step with the spirit rather than just following our fleshly desires right. and our fleshly feelings. And so I think that was something that I learned was preparing for something like that. I never would have imagined I would have gone on the show and I talk about it all in the book, you know, like how, how it led to that decision of me going on the show and all of that. So I get into all of it, but I would say, you know, for me, it wasn't something I pursued. It wasn't something I imagined for myself. I got reached out to. And as I was praying through it, talking with my family about it, it was just something that I really felt like God was like, this is where I'm calling you to go. And I need yeah. you to trust me. And if I'm being honest with you at the time, I was like, God, you've actually lost your mind. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, no, like that doesn't make any sense. I had just graduated from Bible college and Auburn university. I was training to be a pastor. I, that's what I imagined for myself. And like, I want to go out there and speak God's word. I want to do all these things. And so going on a show like the bachelor was the furthest thing than I could have ever imagined for myself. But I heard so clearly, like that was where God was leading me. And I was like, all right, Lord. And I love that you actually pointed out that previously, you know, Christianity had been something that was mocked. It had been something that was um, looked down upon and almost made the person who stood up in their, in their convictions, like made them look foolish. And right. me, I was like, okay, Lord, I don't want to be that. <laughs> like, I don't, yeah. want to be I don't you, want to be you were that. following that, which exactly. was even more pressure. Yeah. <laughs> like, look what they did to the last person who was out outspoken about their virginity and their faith and all that. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, Lord, no, pick someone else. <laughs> pick someone else. It's not me. I don't think I'm your girl. And just time and time again, like the Lord was chasing me down. Like, this is where I need you. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to follow whatever it looks like. And I think that's what I've seen, you know, in my life is just the blessing that comes with obedience and you don't always understand it. There's not always this perfect formula, but when you just say, okay, God, I trust you. And I'm a, like, I'm going to be obedient no matter the cost. It's crazy right. to see like how God can move in you and how God can move through you. Amazing. You know, um, I love that you parallel kind of your life with Queen Esther because seriously, like here she gets yanked into something that she didn't really want to do. And the king is not even a man of faith the way she is. So talk to me about that. Like how, what are the, some of the comparisons that you kind of see in your own life to her? Well, you know, it's crazy. Journey? Because, yeah. And I love that you brought that up because that's, that's really the basis of my book is the story of Esther. And before I went on the show, the verse that God laid on my heart was Esther 414. And I had actually already started writing a book before I ever felt called to go on The Bachelor. It was about something totally different. It was more along the lines of, you know, redirection, reroutes, how you're making, you know, plans to go this way and God redirects you. And then it was like, my life actually <laughs> became that book, which I'm like, what in the world? And so I had actually been writing that, but the verse God had laid on my heart before I went on the show was Esther 4.14, which talks about maybe you've been called to this royal position for such a time as this. 
And I remember going on the show and I, and that was a verse I clung, like I, I cleaned to, but I didn't really know the significance of it at that moment when I came off the show and everyone was asking me, like I was referencing earlier, you know, how were you able to stand firm under pressure? How were you able to stay true to yourself? That story of Esther came back to mind. And I was like, man, that is such a powerful testimony. It's the only book in the Bible where God's name is never mentioned. Like it's such light and darkness. It, it's really this beautiful story of standing firm in your courage and convictions, not knowing what will follow. You know, you could lose, it could cost you everything, but it also could, you could gain so many, like so much along the way, you know, and you could save a people. And so for nice. me, it was like that story came back to mind. And when I was thinking about my book, I was like, I want my book to be something where I'm giving back to people. I'm adding, I'm adding value to people and it's what they're wanting to hear. And so I took all those questions into consideration. I talked to my team and I was like, what is the modern way of saying for such a time as this? And that's when we came up with Made for This Moment. And so I really structured my book with the story of Esther in mind. And of course, I saw parallels in my own specific journey and, you know, time on The Bachelor and, and throughout my life. But I even saw it for, for you, for the, for the listeners here, for the readers that are going to read the book for everyone, because I was like, we have all... We are all made on purpose and for a purpose. Every single one of us has greatness inside of us, potential inside of us, and we are called for a reason. And for this moment in time, it's not by accident that we're here. It's not by accident that we're on this earth in this time of everything that's going on in the world. Like we were needed for this time. And so it almost like ignited this fuel and passion inside of me of, man, I want people to understand that just like Esther, she had to break free from her past. She had to overcome labels. She had to stand in courage, even when she was probably so afraid. She had to go against the grain, even though it may have cost her everything. And mm -hmm. I talk along all of those things because even though that feels like a story that, oh, like that was just something in the Bible. That was something, you know, thousands of years ago, it reigns true for you and for me today of we all face labels. We all face our past. Like we all yeah. face fear and confidence and how, how can I stand firm? How can I know who I am in a world that's constantly trying to tell me who I am, you know? And so for me, it was like, I want I want to see like modern Esther's in today's world rise up and say, this is who I am, not who you tell me who I am. Yeah. This is who I am because this is who God says I am. And I'm going to walk in confidence. I'm going to walk in conviction. I'm going to walk in courage. And, and so really that just kind of was what lit inside of me. And so of course, like you, you know, you said, like I saw so much parallel in my own personal life, but even more than that, I just saw almost this vision of Esther's being like awoken. And I was wow. like, man, it's time for people to rise up, to be unashamed of the gospel, to be unashamed of their convictions and beliefs and to walk out the person that God has called them to be and to make a difference. And so that is like my heart and just my prayer for this book and for everyone listening, for everyone who buys the book is like, that's, that's my hope for them. I love it. Let me ask you this. What, um, what do you say to, you know, there's tons of beautiful young women like yourself, um, who are on social media, who are on these platforms or you, you, you know, you have millions of people following you, which is such a blessing that somebody like you can be an influence to them. Honestly, I mean that. Um, what, what kind of, you know, what advice do you have for them to use their platforms, whatever that looks like, maybe they're not going to be on the bachelor, but maybe it's something different, you yes. know, um, to use their platforms to promote, uh, good and God in Christ, you know, yeah. you know, one of my life verses is acts 20, 24. And it says for my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. And for me, that is a verse that I cling to constantly because I remember that verse reminds me, this life is not about me. It's so much bigger than me. And I think where we can get boggled down as women, as believers, as Christians, so many times is we get trapped in that comparison game. We get trapped mm -hmm. in just the labels that people put on us, the expectations people put on us. And I just, that verse just continues to remind me, like I've been called to run my race and it's not about me. Like I'm here to serve others. I'm here to love on others. I'm here to make a difference, whatever that looks like. 
And so I would just encourage, you know, whoever is listening, like you are you for a reason and you have the people around you in your life that you can reach better than I can, better than you can. And, you know, if not you, then who? Like that, there's a reason that you're in their life. There's a reason that you've been given what you've been given. And I just encourage you to use your voice. And there may be moments where it feels lonely. There may be moments where it's hard. There may be moments where it's awkward, when you have to go against the grain, when you put things out there that people don't agree with, but God will always bless you for that. And also you'll see like, there'll be so much, I just feel like so much joy that fills your heart when you know you're doing what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, it's almost this two way street of you have this goal to like, I'm going to make a difference, but it's like in return, you get filled so much because you're like, I'm doing what God's called me to do. Like I'm walking out exactly the life that God has called me to walk out. I'm walking in obedience. I'm walking in faith. I'm walking in purpose. And when we do that, it's just crazy. Just how much joy, how much confidence, how much hope we have. And also in the meantime, we're helping other people and we're loving on other people. And so really it's a win-win situation. You know, I have seen so many people in my life who from the outside looking in, they have the followers, they have the fame, they have the money, they have the looks, but they're not walking in purpose. And so their life is empty because they're using their voice for selfish reasons. They're using their voice for themselves. It's all about them. It's all about what they can get, what they can gain. And they're so empty inside. They lay their heads down at night and they say, is this all there is? Is there more to life? And it's crazy because those very people I've seen come to me being like, how are you so confident? How are you so joyful? How are you so full of just purpose and hope? And I'm like, Jesus literally Jesus. And I'm like, and, and because I'm not even living for myself and whatever comes with my life, whether it's, it's followers, whether it's not, whether it's on a stage, whether it's in my quiet alone, private time with Jesus or witnessing to a person on the side of the street or encouraging a friend over the phone, whatever that looks like, like just knowing God has given me what he's given me. He's made me uniquely and intentionally. And I'm going to use every single bit of that to glorify him and to help and serve people. And I think, man, if we just have people that have that mindset, how much better would this world be? <laughs> I know. I'm like, you know, it's funny because when I first saw The Bachelor and, you know, they do the introductions and then they say what you, you know, what you do for a living. Um, which is always funny to me. I'm um, just like, that's not the most important part of somebody's life, yeah. but it's, a, but I loved when I saw that you were a foster care recruiter, because my husband and I went through the whole uh, process to, to foster and, and, Amazing. and eventually will adopt. And it's so, it's like, you literally have to have a heart to serve others, to, yeah. to do stuff like that. So when I saw that, I liked you immediately because I'm like, <laughs> this is some, this is a hard job. It's not an easy yeah. job. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you this, um, and then we can wrap it up and, and you can feel free to add whatever else you, you want to add. But there's a lot of young women. I'm a pastor's wife. Um, so I have a lot of girls that I mentor. And what I noticed the trap for many young girls um, is being single and wanting that person, yeah. you know, and a lot of times that can kind of steer you down a direction where you do it's not it's not as easy to just serve and live for Christ because you're looking for that fulfillment can you talk to that because a lot of the people that go on the bachelor are looking for that person right and and who watch the bachelor you know they just want to see something work yeah can you talk to no I love that question because I think I also think that you make so many of we make so many of our decisions from a place of who who we see that we are and what we believe about ourselves, And I think for so many of us, we are constantly, we don't feel like we belong. We don't know who we belong to. We don't know who we truly are. So we latch onto people. We latch onto fantasies. We latch onto situations, onto, you know, fame, onto followers, onto whatever it is, hoping that in that we'll find validation, in that we'll find worth, in that we'll find belonging, then we'll be secure, then we'll be confident. But the truth is, if our confidence is always contingent upon all of these circumstances, then it's never going to be stable. It's never going to be secure. It's never going to be consistent. And for me, one of the biggest things has been finding my confidence, finding my identity in Christ. And from that place, I make my decisions from that place. I have a certain perspective from that place. I attract certain people. 
And I think that that has been so huge. And, and like you said, even on the show, like there were moments where girl, the girls would come to me crying, you know, and they just would be feeling so insecure. Like, what if I don't get a rose? What if I don't get chosen? What if he doesn't like me? You know, and I would see girls changing who they are to be accepted and loved. And that is so true in our world today yeah. is so many girls throw themselves away, throw themselves at people feel like they have to perform, feel like they have to put on this show, feel like they can't even be who they truly are and who they were meant to be because they do whatever it takes to be loved and accepted. Right. And it broke my heart seeing that. And I just remember I had so many conversations with girls and I was like, hey, I just want you to know, like your validation, your worth is not determined by that rose. And if you don't get one, it's not because you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're not like, you don't belong. It's just because God has something different and better for you. And you have to see not getting a rose as not that you're getting rejected, but that God is redirecting it for something better. Yeah. And I think so many of us battle rejection. We've been rejected, whether it's by friends, family, you know, relationships we've had in the past. And I just continue to encourage people like, don't view that as rejection, view it as redirection for something better that God has beautiful plans and purposes for you. He's not withholding good from you. Like if it didn't work out with that person and that person walked out on your life, like let them walk, let them go. God has yeah. something so much better for you, but also know that if you're constantly walking around from a place of lack and you're waiting for someone else to be that abundance, you're going to stay empty. Like you're going to mm -hmm. stay constantly searching. You're going to stay constantly longing. You're going to constantly find yourself riding on this roller coaster of highs and lows. You feel really good about yourself when other people are affirming you, when other people are praising you, when guys are noticing you, when girls are noticing you, whoever is listening, like you, you're riding on the highs and lows of other people and what they think. But the truth is we're all on a journey. And if you're riding on the highs and lows of someone else, like that's a dangerous place to be, but we serve a God who is the same, like yesterday, today, and forever. And we get to have the luxury of when we say, I know who I am because I know whose I am and I know who I belong to. Then we get to come from a place of, I already know I'm accepted. I already know I belong. I already know who I am. I'm already picked. It's not pick me, pick me. It's I already am picked. I already know my worth. I already know I'm chosen. I already know I'm loved. And therefore I walk around, not necessarily with cockiness, but with a confidence of, I don't need you. I really don't right. like, I, I only need Jesus and he, right. and he chose me and he loves me. And so if you choose me back, great. If not fine, like mm -hmm. I'm living my life. And so I just say, I constantly encourage people with that all the time. Cause I do think that that's something that is such a big struggle um, in yeah. today's world, especially for my generation and younger than me, yeah. Yeah. Um, is is almost that pick me, pick me mentality. And it just breaks my heart because I'm like, man, but you're already picked, like you're already right. loved and you don't have to search for that. You already have that is as long as you choose to accept it for yourself. And so that is available to every single person listening. Like Jesus loves you. He's already chosen you. And that is available to you. If you make that decision today, like I want to go all in with the Lord and, or maybe you've just like lost it for a little bit, but you can find it again. And, and it is something that you have to, I feel like daily decide, like I have to constantly choose every Every day. Like I'm choosing Jesus. I'm choosing to walk in the spirit and not out of feelings. And mm -hmm. I'm choosing to, you know, let my confidence be rooted and sourced by him and through him and not in myself. Um, and so that's kind of how I would answer that question. And, you know, even when I came off the show, to be honest with you, I didn't look at like any of my comments, any of my DMS, I didn't read like any magazine articles. Cause I was like, you know mm -hmm. what, like whether people are affirming me and just like saying all these incredible things about me or or maybe they're like tearing me down and telling me I'm the worst person ever. I was like, I don't want to hear either of it because it's not about me and I don't care about their validation. Like I live for an audience of one and I know who I belong to and that's what matters. That's beautiful. Well, Madison, I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful that you were made for this moment, <laughs> like your book says, and I'm really excited for people to get their hands on it. I definitely know that um, God has used you already and I know he's just going to continue to and I'm grateful for your obedience oh. you you are you've said you've seen the fruit and um, it's uh, you know it's just the beginning so I'm grateful for people like you in this world thank you I'm grateful for you and for what you do and for every single person 
listening. Um, my prayer, I just, I've been praying for every single person, you know, that is going to buy this book. And so just know you are prayed over and you are covered and you're not alone. And I am not perfect. I do not have it all together. This is, this book was not written from a place of, I've got all the answers. I'm perfect. Follow me. It's, literally from a place of let's lock arms. Let's go through this together. You're not alone. I'm praying for you. I'm with you. Um, and just for those people who just feel so just boggled down and just in bondage to the pressures and labels of this world and unaware of their true identity and value and purpose, I just want them to feel confident and secure in who they are and know that they can stand firm in what they believe in and embrace all that God has called them and that they were made for this moment. So I thank you so much for having me on. Um, it means so much to me and uh, I'm just so excited for all that's to come for you, for me, for all those listening. <laughs>